So the Office of the Pension Funds Adjudicator concluded its Money Smart Awareness Drive on the protection of pension funds benefits yesterday. The campaign focused on informing the contributor about the laws governing pension funds as stipulated in the Pension Funds Act of 1956. The Act protects the funds against a range of issues, including being reduced, transferred or pledged, among others. The protection of the pension funds is, however, a subject uh, to a few exceptions that can prevail under certain circumstances. Pension fund adjudicator Mubango Lokaimane joins us now to clarify a couple of issues on the subject. Good to have you. Thank you very, very much for your time. Morning, Leanne, and to the viewers. So let, let's start right at the beginning as we, as we get into this conversation. So for those that don't know, what is the actual function of the Office of the Pension Fund Adjudicator? The um, Office of the Pension Funds Adjudicator is one of the statutory ombud offices that deals with complaints from pension fund members. So every pension fund member, out of your contribution, there's a small levy that goes to running our office. So if you should have a complaint later, either because you didn't receive your benefit or um, contributions were not paid or something untoward has happened with your, with your benefit, you then contact us and then we will investigate the complaint on your behalf and issue an order that is akin to a high court order that is enforceable. So when you approach our offices, you, will, you don't need, need any legal representation because the process is also made to be user friendly so that it improves access to our services. Yeah. And the service is absolutely free. Yeah. So under what circumstances can a complaint be heard? And, and, and I suppose we, we need to hear the kind of complaints that your office receive from the public who actually approach you. Yes. The bulk of the complaints um, have to deal with non-payment of contributions. There are quite a lot of employers that do not pay their contributions or pay their, the contributions of their members on time. So um, sometimes when a person wants to withdraw, then that's when they discover that there's an issue. The, our next uh, largest bulk of complaints have to do with delay in the payment of withdrawal benefits. You would know that if people terminate their employment, then suddenly they don't have any income coming through. Therefore, they require their, their benefits fit in order to sustain themselves. Um, so if there's a delay in that payment, we will also get a complaint in that regard. The third largest um, um, category of our complaints deals with death benefits. Most people are not aware that when you pass away, the, 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 it is the board of the pension fund that decides who of your dependents gets what. Um, in terms of percentage. It's a, you can have a nomination form, but that nomination form is just an indication to the board to say, this is, these are my wishes, but the board is not bound by that. So you find that in most instances when a pension fund member passes away, then uh, the family members or other persons are, are confused as to what the role of the board is. And if you have made an election, they also think that uh, the board is bound by that nomination when they are not bound by that. They have to look at who your dependents are and then allocate the death benefit to those dependents in the manner that they deem fit um, when they view their dependency on you. I, that's quite quite fascinating because uh, I, th I think there, there was always an, a, a sort of an understanding that they were bound by that. So perhaps no. you can elaborate more on that. That I, I think may be <laughs> a, a surprise to some. Yes. Um Pension funds will, I think one of the things that confuses people is because you'd be invited while you are a member to say, can you please complete this beneficiary nomination form? But if you were to look at most of the beneficiary nomination forms, they do indicate at the bottom that the act allows the trustees the discretion to allocate the benefit. You are just giving an indication of these are the people that are in my life. It, it, it serves a purpose because it also provides the 
the fund with a start to say, where do we start in terms of looking for nominees, beneficiaries, dependents of our deceased member? And, and that, that form might form the basis of where they start and then they branch it out. They go and they've, they've got to go and look into everybody. If you were supporting your siblings and they were dependent on you, if you have a child out of wedlock and that child was dependent on you, all those things come into play. I think one of the things that we find which is very, uh, which is very painful at the end is that most people become estranged as couples. One person moves away and then they don't share a household and that person continues to believe that because we are married in community of property or in whichever way, I'm still entitled to something. Mm. Only when, to when you come, when, that, when the member has passed away and you discover that the trustees now start saying, show us how you were dependent on this person when you were estranged from them. Because a pension benefit is also protected from a matrimonial property regime. It's not subject to the manner in which you were married. It is allocated completely differently based on who was dependent on you. Wow. Okay. So this is something that people really need to know about because, I mean, you may be just sort of going about your, your sort of activities thinking that this is how it's going to be, and yet it may not. But it, if this is the wishes of the trustee, it, it, it's there, it's signed on paper, um, why would there be discrepancies? I mean, if it's, is that perhaps if it's, if it's completely outdated or, you know, why would the wishes of this person not be taken into account? Because remember that when, when we contribute to a pension fund, a pension fund serves also a social, a social security sort of guarantee. The government gives us tax breaks uh, in order for us to be able to contribute higher percentages in there. And they also have an interest in the fact that in, in, you cannot leave people that were dependent on you destitute when you pass away and allocate your benefit to other persons that do not, were not dependent on you and they don't really need those, those, those um monies for maintenance. Mm -hmm. It's not about the, 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 the form being outdated, but um, you, you find that sometimes people expect a lot of, because a pension benefit is almost the, one of the largest savings that most people have. Other people look at that as if it is part of their inheritance, but it actually is not. It is it, it, it remains to serve a social purpose. That is why when you pass away, it has to be first, it has to take care of the people that will be left destitute and start suffering because their basic needs now are not being satisfied because you as the member has passed away. Yeah, fantastic. Listen, just, just one final point on this because I know there's a lot to get through, but is this explained properly to people um, when, they, when, they, when they sign into the pension fund? Are they fully aware that this is what actually happens? Judging by the, by the complaints, um, people are definitely not aware. Mm. The pension, the member may be aware, and the the, the member might be receiving a, um, might be receiving a documentation to that effect and learning material. But remember, at that point, the member has passed away. It's now the beneficiaries. It's now the so members also have a a a, a, a responsibility to teach and to impart certain knowledge to their beneficiaries and to those that depend on them to say, listen, in case I pass away, uh, this is what is what I wish to have happen. However, the trustees still have a discretion and that discretion is based on one, two, three. Remember that the discretion is not exercised in an irrational manner. In a, that, that is mostly then how then we get the complaint because someone will be alleging that, but these trustees have, have, have exercised their discretion in an irrational manner. This is not a reasonable outcome given one, two, three. And there are many things that the fund will consider. It's not just maintenance. They will consider the age of the parties. They will consider how much money is available for allocation. They will consider the relationship 
of the people that are claiming the money to the deceased. Because remember also, uh, you cannot really uh, benefit from the passing of someone that you didn't have a good relationship with. Or so. so there are a range of issues that the trustees will rely on and gather information in that respect before they exercise their discretion. Sure. Very fascinating. It, it really is, because I, I, I truly believe that this is a big one that needs lots and lots of attention. I, I don't think that there are people that are aware of this or even sure of it. So I'm, I'm glad we've lingered on this for a while, but I'm just looking at our time. I need to get through a few other things. Um, a few clarities for the viewer, such as, Yes. What is actually meant in the legislation when it says that pension fund benefits may not be subjected to any form of execution under a judgment or order of a court of law? Perhaps you can explain that as well. It means that the relationship with the, in a pension fund is with the member. Therefore, whatever benefits are payable from a pension fund must go directly to the member. But then they give you certain exceptions. And those exceptions are if there is a maintenance order against you, that maintenance order can be enforced against, um, against your pension fund benefit. If you were divorced, if you become divorced and your, and your spouse is entitled to a portion in terms of your settlement agreement or an order of the divorce order is entitled to a portion of your, of your pension benefit, then that will also be paid to them. And this is also one of the things that confuses many people in terms of the pension interest that is payable at, at divorce. It doesn't get calculated from the day that you were married to a person to the day that you got divorced. It actually has to do with your entire membership in a fund. So if you, if you are a member from 2010 and you get divorced in 2023, but you got married in 2015, then they will consider your benefit from 2010 to determine the 50% share or whatever share that, that the other type spouse is entitled to. Another thing that can be deducted from a pension fund is an amount that you owe from to your employer for theft, fraud, um, and, and, and misconduct. And that has to be proven. It cannot be stuff like a study loan or a bursary or stuff or administrative things like that or a deduction in lieu of a notice period. It's got to be that you did something that amounts to a mis, mis, to misconduct, fraud or theft, and that has an element of dishonesty in it. Then your employer can ask the fund and the fund has to exercise some form of discretion, get your input before they can take a decision on whether to make that deduction for the employer or not. Okay. So, I mean, there are exceptions that, that are allowed, including maintenance, tax-related debt. Um, yes. An order on a judgment in terms of Section 65 of the Magistrates' Court Act as well. Yes. If, if you can perhaps clarify those very quickly as well for us. Those are, are exactly what I've just gone okay. through. Tax okay. uh, 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 has to be deducted. Every time you're entitled to a benefit, a directive will go out. Yeah. And if you owe other taxes at that point, those will also be taken in terms of an IT88. The magistrate... Um, one has to deal with the maintenance, the maintenance aspect that I've just dealt with. All right, sure. Okay, so I mean, there's there's also been this this um, this debate which has uh, raised even in Parliament about whether contributors should be allowed to access their funds to be used yes. to provide surety for a lender to perhaps a, a guarantee a repayment when a debtor is unable to pay back the loan. Some have rationalised mm. that that view due to the levels of indebtedness because of low. Salaries. Um, what is your advice on this? I mean, do you think this should be allowed? And especially during the times of COVID, it was a very tough time and, and people needed that money but just could not access it and also as surety. What, what, are your, what do you think about this? Well, I see that a lot, Liet, yeah. in that um, we, we um, the, 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 the the, the two-pot system that National Treasury needs to put in place actually depends on something very huge happening. That is data being very clean in funds. Many funds, their data is not very clean. So as a start, as a member of a fund, make sure that 
your data is clean and is correct. Your entry date is, is correct. Your, your, the, everything, your contribution rate as, as recorded is correct. During COVID, and this for us was not only during COVID, because there are many people that are self-employed and they sit in retirement annuities. You've got your doctors, your self-employed people that run their own businesses. Then they fall into a problem. They've got an, a, a, a huge amount sitting in an RA and they cannot do anything. People lose their houses. Their children cannot go to, to school. So there is room for that to happen. It just has to be done in a responsible manner because, as you know, the reason we have things that, like Money Smart Week is because Treasury tells us all the time that we are not saving enough yeah, to retire, yeah. uh, uh, to retire uh, uh, in, a, in, a, in a good way, given the kind of salaries that we are earning. So we always have to say, what is it that we access okay. and for what? so that there is still something left in the end. All right. I've got to leave it there. Unfortunately, such a fascinating conversation. Pension fund adjudicator Obango Lukaimani talking to us about um, pension fund protection and, of course, the laws governing pension funds. Thanks so much to her.